Welcome back to the Learning Channel, where we will be continuing our education on Fusion 360. I wanted to start this lesson off by thanking everyone who has joined in, who has subscribed to the Learn It channel, who has made comments, who has supported us, messaged us. Thank you so much. It's uh, been a great process so far in making these videos, and I hope to make a lot more which will be beneficial to those learning Fusion 360. So let's get into our lesson. Today we are going to be talking about improving with our sketching ability. And we're going to take a look at this simple part. So far we've looked at parts uh, that have just had a simple shape, one simple shape. Well, we're going into this part, which has an offset to it. It's got uh, two shapes, basic shapes, with our counter bore in the middle. So this is our final product over here. And we have all our dimensions to make our product. So if we get a part like this, it's uh, quite simple. Sometimes we think right off the bat, you know, there's a lot of complicated shapes here, geometries, but what we do when we take a complicated part, we break it down into its fundamental shapes. So what do I mean? Well, here we have it, a circle, circular shape, a cylinder, and then off to the side, we have what we could define as a square shape. So if we break down this part into those two simple shapes, well, it will make our design process a lot easier. So first of all, let's start off with our cylinder. Now you might like take a look at the drawing here and see that one dimension is based as a diameter and the other is referenced as a radius. So why is that the case? Well, basically, if we have a dimension or a feature that is completely round with no interruptions, usually we define that as a diameter. However, as we look at this circle, it is interrupted by this square section. So even if we take a look at our drawing, it's not a complete circle, it's interrupted by another feature, another surface. So in those instances, generally we use what's called a radius. So remember, for those that are starting off with math, some of our young learners, a radius is half of our circle, whereas a diameter is the full uh, extent from one side of the circle to the other. So that's called diameter, and remember that's the symbol for it, whereas radius just has an R. So let's get into the design process. Let's open up a new design. And right away, we can save it as lesson eight. And we can just call it improving with sketches. So when it comes to drawing, sometimes we think that we have to draw one basic shape, save it, do another sketch as another basic shape. But we learned something amazing with Fusion. We can draw pretty well everything that we see in one view. So remember, this is our front view right now. We can draw pretty well everything we see here and then extrude the part after. So let's do that. Let's just create this circle first. So we have 1.375 diameter with a 1.25, so let's do that. Let's create a sketch on our front plane, our X, Z plane. And we're going to create the small diameter first, 1.375, and then our radius. Well, do you remember what it is? 1.25 radius times two, and there we go. Remember, we can move our dimensions off to the side so we can read this better. Let's just finish a sketch for now and go back to our drawing. Now let's assume that this is a complete circle without any fillets, any radiuses, or anything like that. Well, it's two inches by two inches, and that actually lines up with the origin of our part. So let's do that. Let's go back to our original sketch, and let's draw a rectangle. I'm just going to draw it off into space over here. Let's go like that. 
Remember, when everything is blue, it means we can adjust it. So if we go back to our drawing, the width is two inches, the height is two inches. So let's do that. So I'm going to specify the width as two inches. And then I'm just going to use the equal constraint to say I want that edge and that edge to be the exact same. Now we need to anchor it. Well, we're going to anchor this point with our bullseye, our origin. Now, how do we do that? Again, we use the coincident constraint. And we're just going to pick that corner and our bullseye. And there we have it. It's fully constrained. Next, let's go back to our drawing. I'm going to finish that. Let's go back to our drawing. We have the position, the center position of our counterbore. It's one and a quarter inches off of center in both X and Y. So let's design that 1.25 and 1.25. Let's go back to our sketch. And we're just going to create a simple circle. At this point, it doesn't matter what size our circle is, and I'll prove it to you. Our counter bore is a certain size that will go all the way through our part. But uh, let's just uh, put this as 0.1. That's a very small circle. But let's just put this in place, or our dimension from the center point to there, and it's going to be 1.25. And then our dimension in y 1.25 there we go so this will be the center point of our counter bore and again our diameter of our circle here can be any dimension we want but let's just put 0.1 to prove a point next what do we have well we have the rads and we have the fillets and then we also have the depth of our extrude well let's leave that till the next operation should we design the fillets at this point? Well, sometimes we can, and sometimes we should save it to later. Why would we not want to put our fillets in right now? Well, Fusion 360 is very smart. However, when it comes to sketches, we want to keep our sketches as basic as possible, and then put our fillets in at the end of the design of our part. Unless we have one feature that's based off of a fillet, we don't really need to put them into our sketches. Sometimes what that does is it breaks our constraints and it makes our sketches harder to read and harder to understand. So let's save our fillets to the very end. Right now, our part is complete. Let's go finish sketch. So now we would like to extrude our cylinder. Let's look at our cylinder first of all. It is one inch in depth. So let's do that. Let's extrude and we're gonna pick all of the features of our cylinder. And we're gonna pull it back to one inch in depth. Remember, once we extrude any part of a sketch, Fusion assumes that we no longer want that sketch visible. So it hides it. We just have to go back to our sketches and make it visible again. Great. Let's save. Let's go back to our sketch. The square portion of our part is half an inch deep. So let's go back to our part. We're going to now extrude this and our circle. And we're going to go 0.5 inches deep. And remember our operation here, we don't want a different part as a new body, but we want to join them together. Let's hit OK. Once we've done that, once we've made a sketch visible again, Fusion thinks, oh, OK, they probably want to keep on working with this sketch. So it keeps it visible. That's why it's still on the screen. So at this point, we don't need it anymore. Now we can just hide it. So here's our part. It's looking great so far. We're almost done. So what else do we need? Well, we can put our counter bore hole in it. So let's look at our drawing again. Our counter bore is 0.5 inches through. The actual counter bore is one inch 
by a quarter inch deep. So let's make that. Let's turn back on our sketch. We're going to select our hole feature. So let's click our center point. And we can see that our arrow is going the wrong direction. It thinks that we want to put our hole going this way. And it even brings up an error. No target body found to cut. Well, all we have to do is flip direction in our box, our dialog box. Well, there we go. Remember our extents, we want to go all the way through. So that's all. Let's pick our hole type. It's a counter bore. Our counter bore is going to be one inch in diameter by a quarter inch deep. And the main part of our counter bore, the through hole, is 0.5. There we go. As simple as that, our part is done. Let's hide. Now all we have left are the final parts pretty well. Again, I want to uh, emphasize this that most of the time we save our fillets to the very end. So let's take a look at our fillets. This one is a radius of 0.75. And this right here specifies the typical radius of anything that is not specified. So this is 0.125 or an eighth of an inch. And it refers to one, two, three, four edges or corners. So let's remember that, 0 0.75, 0 0.125. So I'm going to go to fill it. Let's do our large one first. I'm going to select that edge. And you can see that immediately it brings up a little box here that we can type in our dimension, 0 0.75. And re remember, this refers to our radius value. Now, instead of hitting OK and creating another fillet, we can actually add a selection set. So let's hit that plus. You can see that our fillet disappears, but the edge is still selected. It's still blue because that's our first selection set. Our next selection set, we can pick our other edges. Let's do it. One, two, three, and four. And we'll call this an eighth of an inch or 0.125. You see, once we input a dimension, all of our fillets update at the same time. Say, for example, we missed an edge. How can we select it again? Well, select your selection set. Hit the control button on your Windows computer or command on your Mac. And look what happens. We can reselect those edges. Now I've unselected them. Let's select them again by holding down Control or Command. And we can reselect those edges. Now we're done. Congratulations, you have just looked at a more detailed drawing and have created a more complex part. In future lessons, the drawings will get more complex, the parts will get more complex, but your skills will continue to improve and you will be able to create parts like this in no time. As a little homework assignment, please in the comments below, start from scratch, start this part completely from scratch and tell me how long it takes you to make the part to its finished specs that you see on the screen right here. Mention how many minutes, how many seconds, uh, how many hours, it all depends what skill level you're on but I'd love to hear from you and see how you're doing. Again, if you've benefited from this video, please like, please subscribe, please hit that notification bell so that you can keep up to date. We've got some exciting things in the future. We're looking forward to continuing our lessons. Next lesson, we're going to talk about assembling. So we're going to have more than one part. We're going to design two parts and we're even going to import some screws that will help to finish our assembly. So thank you again for joining the Learn It channel. Looking forward to seeing you again with the next tutorial.